All right, hi, my name is Peter McGrath and I'm from Wilson Audio. I'm delighted to be here to uh, introduce the Alexia Series 2 loudspeaker from David Wilson and Daryl, his son. The Alexia Series 2 was introduced around March of 2017. The original Series 1 was introduced approximately five years ago as well. And um, the, they look very similar, particularly when you have them side by side, but there are some fundamental differences in the overall shape and design. Um, looks can be deceiving because the quality of the sound between them is, is, is pretty significant. The Alexia One was a groundbreaking design when it first came out. It was a design that was uh, totally attributable to Daryl Wilson, Dave Wilson's son. It was one of his very first and significant efforts on behalf of Wilson Audio. So we're very, very proud of that. It has done extremely well. But while the Alexia One had continued very well in sales, we as a company continued to grow. And much of the growth that, and, and technology development came from Dave Wilson's involvement with the WAM Chronosonic speaker, which is our flagship speaker. It's a system that sells for uh, just a little under $700,000. It's an absurdly beautiful, absurdly wonderful system. But there's a lot of technology that, that Daryl, his son, picked up in the development of that loudspeaker and has found ways to incorporate various aspects of that. First of all, the tweeter that's in this loudspeaker looks, for all intents and purposes, similar to the one that's in this one. But in fact, this tweeter is a tweeter derivative of the tweeter that's actually inside of the master chronosonic. Um, the back wave, the way we handle it, the back pressure wave is identical to what we're doing in that uh, large-scale loudspeaker. It's a significantly better sounding tweeter than the best we were able to provide to this loudspeaker at the time we designed it. So that alone is a big starting point. Number two, the mid-range driver, as you can see, is identical uh, in size and shape to both speakers, but the enclosure that houses this driver has approximately 17% higher internal volume, and also we've been able to develop a much more significant way of handling the back wave pressure of that tweeter, a uh, mid-range driver, excuse me, and the result is, is a faster, more transparent, more detailed sound coming out of the mid-range component. Mid-range being a pretty significant part of the overall speaker's uh, sonic signature and characteristic. The woofer enclosure is about 11% larger internal volume than the woofer enclosure of the predecessor. Even though this is slightly higher on the wing, the actual volume in here is a little bit bigger. The crossovers for the top and bottom of this loudspeaker, the Alexia Series 2, has been completely reworked. And um, one of the issues that was never a very serious one, but one that was a more cause for concern than actual uh, functional reality was the modulus of impedance of the older speaker went down uh, significantly below two ohms. The modulus of impedance on the newer loudspeaker barely goes below three ohms, which means that it represents a more benign load to any amplifier. It widens the scope of possibilities of choices for amplification. Um, you can probably get away with driving this with, for example, a 20 watt tube at. Not what I would necessarily recommend, but probably would have been verboten with this loudspeaker. So the possibilities open up a bit. It's an easier load to drive allowing the potential user to enjoy a wider, wider range of options. Um, the low frequency extension on this loudspeaker is slightly better than it was on this loudspeaker. The overall sensitivity between the two speakers is roughly within a dB, so that hasn't changed in any significant way. What has changed is the aggregate of the components add up to a fairly substantial increase, transparency and resolution. Um, something you can't see from where the camera is, but back here we have a plate which is totally different from the other one where all of the resonant modes of the top module come to one point. 
That plate is made out of a material that was developed for the Wham loudspeaker. It's extremely difficult to work with, extremely costly to obtain. And we're using it at the most critical junction where all of the resonant modes of the head come together before they are vented and transmitted down through the base module. That does not exist in the Alex uh, Alexia Series 1 because we didn't have the technology to do that then. So uh, there are various and sundry other features, some of them cosmetic and some of them mechanical. Um, but as I said before, it's bringing all the little elements together. Oh, we've improved the spikes on the uh, Alexia Series 2. They're quite a bit more substantial. They're taken from the Wham as well. They're very large and very, very stiff and uh, uh, extremely sturdy. Um, there's one big change that I almost forgot to talk about, and that is one of the principal design elements of the Alexia loudspeaker is the ability to adjust it in the time domain, meaning that you can move these two drivers independently of each other. This moves forwards and backwards and the angle can change. That is determined by the listening distance from the speaker and the height of the ear off the ground relative to the plane that the speakers are sitting on. Well, again, from the master chronic sonic coming down, what uh, has been developed in that speaker is the ability to adjust in the time domain to get that speaker optimized practically down to six nanoseconds exactly. Taking from that those small tiny incremental movements that we can, the original settings on the head assembly here would allow you to move the head in um, about a sixteenth or, uh, or more of an inch step. We've now taken the gradations here where it's much more granular and therefore you can obtain a much tighter control of the position of this critical component relative to this. And uh, it's about three times higher level of granular resolution over what it was on, on the speaker. That is a direct descendant of what we learned, how important that is in, in the bigger brother. And that kind of technology will no doubt find its way into other various uh, versions of Wilson speakers that have time domain correction, which uh, were really kind of unique in the industry in terms of speakers that do this. Um, uh, I know that the claim is that it could be achieved to a great extent electronically in the crossover. Well, there's no substitute for mechanical reality being able to actually position the speaker so that the wave launch is in perfect synchronicity uh, across the bandwidth. And that's something that, that uh, we do well with this, we do even better with this. So that's, in a nutshell, the summation of the differences. And Some people have suggested, once they're in full grasp of it, that we probably could have called it a different model. But it looks so similar and yet is so dissimilar in terms of its improvements. We wanted to keep it, for now anyway, in the same family. It's essentially uh, the, the same product, simply significantly improved. Thank you.